Ooh. Dang, son. Holy cow. Holy cow. Giant. Giant. I got a big one. I got a big one. Oh gosh. Holy cow. Whoa. Man, there's just something about a beautiful springtime morning sitting in the kayak just like don't even know if i'm going to catch fish but like the anticipation the desire to catch one but really just being out here in nature it, i mean there's not many feelings like it i had a bite there on my first cast <laughs> what's going on everybody welcome back to uncut this is my favorite series honestly to do on the entire channel you know i teach a lot of techniques on how to catch fish and where to catch fish but when it comes to just catching fish, that's my favorite thing. Showing you guys some awesome experiences on camera. And today is no different. Why well, I say today is no different. Today, matter of fact, is different. Uh, it is a beautiful property that I'm at today. I'm at a private water fishing property in Fairfield. Uh, there's two, actually two lakes in this property, but they're separate listings. It is Harding Lake and Red Lake, but the uh, lake that I'm fishing today in the yak is Harding and it's just gorgeous. You can tell all the drone shots. I mean, this place is beautiful. And, oh, and I had a bite. I had a, we're gonna catch a lot of fish today. So we're gonna have a lot of fun, but I just kind of want to take the first few minutes here. You know, before the wind picks up, hopefully we don't have a whole lot of wind to deal with today. But if we do, I just want to kind of breathe in the sights and the sounds. You know, as I was launching my kayak, I usually play some YouTube video or music to kind of pass the time as I prep the rods and the life jacket and the batteries and everything but today i took the phone out and i said you know what no we're gonna listen to the sounds of nature we're gonna listen to the trees and the wind and i needed that so welcome to uncut we're just gonna catch a whole bunch of fish today and teach you guys everything i learn along the way this video is brought to you by bass forecast we'll talk more about them and uh, how helpful they are to me as an angler and how they can be to you as well we'll talk about them after uh the first few fish catches but i'm excited i haven't done truly haven't done an uncut where it like the footage besides maybe going to the restroom and uh, changing out batteries the footage is is totally uncut and that's the goal for today so the first lure that i'm well first of all let's go with conditions i'm filming this video it is spring time the trees have bloomed the flowers are in full force on the highways. I live in Texas, so the blue bonnets and Indian paintbrush, Indian blanket, they're, uh, they're going crazy, which is, which is fun to see. Um, spring is in full force, and I think here at this body of water, water temp is, my transducer is still uh, updating, not updating, it's still reading the you know, current conditions. But as of now, it's 65.3. I assume it'll rise a little bit, but that's kind of like prime time. Um, spawn temperature i just realized i wasn't recording that camera so hey better audio now although hopefully it wasn't that bad to uh, to begin with yeah 65.6 it's already rising so we're probably going to have somewhere to start 66 67 degree water and i think because i was on a public body of water in dallas yesterday and i watched a wave of fish like in real time, come up and start spawning. Uh, I would go down the bank and I wouldn't see any any small bass or buck bass. And then I'd go back down and I'd see uh, <laughs> I'd see five or six and one female with them. So the spawn is definitely on. And that's going to direct my lures. Now, we could see, like I said, a wave of fish in the pre-spawn as well. I'm not saying that every fish I'm going to catch today is going to be crazy shallow. Probably going to have to slow down, maybe slow roll spinnerbait or vibrating jig. To catch some fish in a little deeper water but i'm starting here with one of the swim baits yeah the coal shad that I, I'm, I'm experimenting with i'm trying out a whole bunch of new swim baits this year that way when i make a video on all the new swim baits i kind of have a good idea of how to fish them and and how uh, how they catch fish and this thing seems to not do very well on a very slow roll so i kind of wish it was a little bit uh, faster sinking I'm being honest, but I'm going to put this away for a second and I'm going to grab 
Now, first thing, I need to uh, rearrange my rods here. So I'm in the new native uh, Titan Max, Titan X, and it's got little rod pods, which is cool. So I can feed my rods like seven foot and shorter in the rod pod. Well, if I can move this rod. There we go. Allows me to keep a few more rods in my uh, in my kayak as I fish. But I just want to cast a frog around. Again, this whole property here is surrounded by cattails. And in order to really assess what's going on with the, the fishery, water temp, I mean water temp, the, uh, the sun angle probably has to be a little bit higher. I'm gonna kind of boogie shallow for a second and see if uh, I can see any fish on beds. But I'm already noticing, I mean, if I look out in live scope, it is a lot deeper than I thought. It goes all the way out to 12 feet out there. So we're sitting in eight right now, which being this close to the bank, sitting in eight feet is kind of surprising. But seeing that kind of depth makes me think that this is probably a healthy fishery. So I'm gonna turn this way for a second. I apologize for the blown out angle you're seeing there. I just wanna stand up and uh, take a gander at what I'm seeing. I've been told this place has a lot of fish, but that doesn't mean we're gonna catch them right away. It's kind of the whole point of Uncut is showing you all the process. We have lots of aquatic vegetation, again, both in the, uh, the, cat the cattails on the edge, but also we have some American pond weed, and it looks like we also have, uh, I can't exactly tell what the other type of grass is. I'll pull it up and I'll, I'll identify it eventually once my lure makes contact. Just a gorgeous morning. My gosh. Super, super happy about uh, getting out here this morning. But I'm going to be a little happier when I catch a fish. I'll be a little happier. Not sure if I'll get a bite on the frog that far out in the column. It's like six feet deep out there, so I probably need to just focus on the first few feet there. And here, I'm really, you know, in the summertime, these fish are just up shallow because they need to be for the shade of it in the morning to ambush prey before they head deeper. But in the springtime, these fish are either cruising around looking to make a bed they are on a bed or they are fry guarding. So the male will oftentimes stick around and uh, protect the newly hatched bass babies. So that's the three kind of bass that we're targeting as I throw a frog up shallow. And I see a hole right here. Let me pedal forward just a second. Stand up and look, see if it's a bed. And it doesn't look like it is. All right, let me back out of here. I can't even, I can't stop saying what, oh, hello. I gotta get a different camera pole. I'm gonna keep hitting that with my foot. I can't stop saying what a gorgeous property this is. It is so tranquil, peaceful. Gosh. Gosh dang, son. This is why I love Uncut. I get to show you guys all this stuff that a normal video probably has to get cut out just for the sake of teaching in a timely manner. Although, since I haven't caught one yet, I know it's Uncut, but I probably will do just one cut so I make sure I can... Uh, pattern these fish and figure out what they're doing and then we'll uh and we'll resume the uncut so we're gonna do a cut unless i catch one right here unless i catch one right here the water's just so clear i don't know if i can catch them on a frog that well and the water's just clear i think it's a private lake so they shouldn't be that smart but you never know in that super clear water 
Oh, and I'm excited to go. I've got a, uh, I got a Japanese lure that if I see one on a bed, I'm throwing. And I got the rod rigged up for it and everything. But I don't want to waste y'all's time without seeing some fish catches. So we're going to do a cut in three, two. Oh, gosh. Ow. Ow. Man. That was the Lord telling me, Tyler, don't do a cut. You're lying to the folks. I got a frog bite right there. And then I, and then I swung back and my frog hit me right in the bicep. All right. All right. We're going to catch this fish. Come on now. Come on now. You were not very big. You were not very big. I don't think. Or else I feel like you would have flushed it. And it was kind of a weak bite. Nice subtle pops. Subtle pops. Dang, son. All right, we're doing a cut. Three, two, one. Son, holy cow, holy cow, giant, giant. I got a big one. I got a big one. Gosh, holy cow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh, holy cow, holy cow. Whoa. First bite of the day is this. I had to Hank Parker this fish. Oh my gosh, I saw some fish. Looked like they were chasing bait back there behind the uh, behind the cattails in like a little shallow water area. Oh, first bite that I got. I honestly thought after seeing that gator, it was some small gators back there, but no, it's a giant bass. Goodness, probably I'm gonna power pull down. Probably, I mean, if it wasn't skinny, it'd be like seven pounds, but it's probably five, five and a half pounds. Oh, ho, ho. That's awesome. That's awesome. Brand new secret frog. Y'all aren't supposed to know about that yet, but it's coming out soon. Oh my gosh. Absolutely gorgeous. This is so cool. I got to get out my, uh, my measuring board and my fishing chaos identifier. I'm running a fishing chaos online tournament all year long and uh, it's free to join. Every month we give away awesome prizes. This month is, uh, best five fish lengthwise and it's a mock combo for the winner so i gotta get out my phone here there we go 21 incher to start the uh, tournament for me and we'll see you buddy let's go so there are some willing to eat the frog i had honestly put the frog away because i didn't think there were any frog eaters but i think if you get shallow enough and uh the fish are in the right mood Again, I'm not sure if they were spawning back here in this little cut or what the deal was going on. But uh, either way, happy to begin the fish catching portion of the uncut with a, a five pounder. That was cool. I totally thought I would have had a gator. That's fully what I was expecting, if I'm being honest. I'm going to clear my spool. I'm sure the braid dug into itself. No, nope, not too bad. And I'm going to get back in there. I mean, if there was, there was one five pounder, hopefully there's more. So I'm going to stand up. Good thing about this uh, this native is it's incredibly stable. So with us power pulled down here, I can kind of cast around wherever I want to. That was insane. What a topwater bite, man. Paying attention caught me that fish. I saw a swirl back here, and then I kept seeing these little pencil reeds move. And I kind of kept following, and I would miss my cast, and eventually... I cast right where the pencil reeds were moving and got flushed. So that was cool. I'm guessing there's not going to be more back here, but I'm going to make a super long cast that way. I got to adjust my body if I'm going to set the hook from that direction. There we go. 
Let's see. Any more of y'all back there? Any more of you shallow springtime bass? I hope so. I was cool. But what y'all missed in the in the meantime, before I caught that fish, was uh, a lot of nothing. I threw the frog a decent amount of time. I threw the, the swim bait. But the problem is, I just don't think there's many fish shallow right now. I think maybe later on in the day, as the water continues to warm up, now it is 68.2. That's what the water finally settled at. So it's plenty warm. But I think, you know, in the springtime, a lot of those bigger fish go deep at night. And to get back up shallow to, to spawn or to eat bluegill beds or eat bluegills off their beds, they, uh, they don't come shallow until at least the sun gets up. That's just kind of what I've noticed over the years. So it's my last cast in this little area right here. It's so shallow. If there was a big fish that's moving, I would see him. Now, if he's sitting still, I wouldn't. He could sit in five inches of water and you wouldn't see him. But that is exciting. Catching him on an unreleased frog. How about that? Top of the mouth. No problems there. No problems there. Oh, I got a boil. I got a Susan boil. And it didn't, it didn't result in a fish. I wonder if I could get myself a wacky worm. Cast it over there where I had a boil. Let's see if I can't follow up. It's probably a small fish. And I'm probably gonna now catch him on the wacky worm. Bad cast. Bad cast. There we go. Let's get ourselves a little rinky dink on the wacky worm. How about it? Watch my line as it falls. Yeah, I think I've got him. Oh no, I don't. Never mind. You can tell when a fish has got it in calm water because your line is it, it, it ticks and then it starts to run off one direction. And I thought that I uh, saw it run, but I guess not. Yeah there, yeah, there he was. Teeny tiny. Rinky dink, as they say. So I think this day is really just going to be like a situational fishing day. Whatever I see in front of me is what I'm going to fish. If I see shallow stuff like that that has bass moving in it, I'll fish it. If I see a deep edge, I'll fish it. It's kind of my thought process today. But I am going to power pull up here. I'm going to get going. Uh-oh. If I can, that's the problem, is I got so shallow, and I didn't bring my, uh, didn't bring my paddle, that I'm kind of stuck in the, uh, in the grass. So let's go ahead and get the pedal drive up. I, th I really thought about bringing the paddle. It's in the truck. But I did not, because I didn't figure... I would be needing it. But if I'm in a decent amount of grass, I probably do. Probably do be needing it. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough. That's tough. I can't be, uh, I can't be getting this shallow. I don't think. I gotta walk that. Yeah, I think I need to go back and get my paddle. Because this grass is not, like, thin. I mean, it's like the stringy stuff that's really, really grabby on uh, on your yak. So I'm going to try to muscle my way out of here. Oh, gosh. I make I make uh, headway for a second, and then, I, and then I don't. This grass is so grabby. I have a feeling I can uh, pop this wheel out of here. And that can be a paddle. Yeah. How about that? How easy was that? Let's go. How easy was that? I don't need my paddle. I've got a wheel. Oh, 
All right, so what have we learned? We learned uh, that I, I can't get that shallow in the grass because then I'm gonna get in a predicament. But I have a wheel and a wheel is, uh, is a good enough paddle. So back we go. Maybe I should have brought the, uh, the little dump it wherever I want kayak today and not worried about the wheel system. I just hate, I hate pedaling. I hate paddling, sorry. If I can pedal, I'm gonna pedal. But I really, I mean, now that I've gotten a, a big bite shallow, I wanna fish shallow. I wanna see if they're there. And you know what, if they are there, I'm gonna ditch the wheels and get a dang, uh, get a dang paddle. Looking around for beds, not seeing a whole lot. Again, though, if I'm gonna be bed fishing, I gotta wait for the sun to get up. It is really tough to see anything during this, this hour of the day. I mean, it's hard for y'all to see me from that front angle. Imagine how hard it is to, for me to see in the water. Like, yeah, there's, there's a, a bed, but I can't, I can't see what's down there. I definitely like this area, though, better than where I was. It's a lot more sand. And if there's a lot more sand, I feel like there's a lot more chance of some fish around the spawning process. Come on, flush me. Get flushed. Like I'm playing poker. Straight flush, baby. Come on, come on, come on. There's gotta be a bass over there, come on. Nothing, no bass, no bones. Put this away for a second. Grab me the swim bait. I'm gonna go ahead and put the wacky worm one more slot back. If I'm going to just be rotating between these two. I'm going to swim bait over the point. Because if these fish aren't actually up on the sand yet, spawning, maybe there's one off. My biggest problem with the coal shad is that it has to be worked pretty high in the water column. The weight system on the inside is not very heavy. And so, if you're not reeling it, I mean, when, when, you, when you do reel it at the, the speed it needs to for the tail to kick, it brings it pretty high in the water column. So there may be a situation on this pond, maybe a shallow corner where this swim bait plays. But as of now, with the stalks of grass that stick up pretty high in deeper water, this is a tough bait to throw because you're fishing it too high in the column and then you snag grass and then it ruins your cast. So that's what happened just there. Like I can't even let it sink sometimes, even in deep water, because the, the dang grass gets in. And I also feel like I need to put sunscreen on. Or else I'm gonna get burned. Because we gotta let it burn, burn, burn. Looking up shallow for the beds. For the beds. I mean, I'm, I'm looking for fry garters too. I'm looking for post spawners. And I just don't see a whole lot. Like 68 degree water, central Texas, or central east Texas, makes me think there for sure are. But I'm not seeing them. I feel like I should. Ooh, I just heard a shot. There are some hunters on the property hunting nutria and beaver and the gators, of course, that are in this lake and the other lake. Because they don't want no gators in here. They don't want no alligators. They must have missed on the first shot because I heard another.
I just can't believe I'm not just catching them winding around the swim bait, even though it's pretty high in the water column. Makes me think these fish are a little smarter than you would think being at such a gorgeous private place. But honestly, that's kind of what I've noticed is that there's like the stigma that private lakes are super easy. I said the stereotype, but that's not always the case. A lot of times they're just smaller bodies of water where the fish are just as smart. You just have to trick them. You have to figure them out. You have to pattern them just like you would on a big lake. And I'm gonna be honest. I don't think this swim bait is the ticket. And I kind of had to fish it to find that out. Water, I mean, even with crystal clear water, maybe it's the color. A lot of the public lakes I fish around Dallas and really around the country have stained water. And this, uh, you know, pearl white type color <clears throat> is one of the top sellers across the board on all these pre-rigged swim baits for a reason. And that's because it gets bit all over the place. But maybe in here, they look at this and they're like, I've never seen a big white bait fish because all they have is thread fin and bluegill. I just, um, I have a hard time putting things down that I want to catch a fish on. Even though I know that's not the right way to be efficient, which I preach all the time, like I probably need to throw something else. Since this is not, uh, not getting it done. Yeah, you know what? I'm not gonna untie this, but I'm gonna tie something different on, on a different rod that I think might catch me one. I just really want a bed fish. The, the sun's just gotta be higher. All right, I'm gonna put this swim bait away. I'm trying to think about what I do here to Make some room. I think I've got to take this rod, switcheroo, your wacky, wacky rig goes in the back, then frog, and then big swim bait. Then I need to take this rod here and feed it down the, down the rod hole. Perfect. And then I need to get myself a spinner bait. If I, if I packed it, I think I did, pretty sure in my tackle box back here. I'm using the Evolution uh, tackle trays. This here is the four-way latch waterproof um, box. And I do that in my kayak because I just feel like I get more water in uh, in my tackle boxes as I'm kayak fishing, because there's more, more stuff going on around me. And so I want to have a waterproof tackle box. Because in the bass boat, in the bass boat, if I get rained on, who cares? My tackle boxes are put away. But with this one specifically, this kayak or just kayaks in general, you get rained on, boo hoo, you are wet. And so is everything you own. So there's the dang tip for the day. Get a waterproof tackle box for your, uh, for your kayak. And put a spinnerbait on <clears throat> when you have a little bit of wind and you have to go a little deeper. Now I could also throw the dang hybrid hunter, which you know what, if I catch him fishing a spinnerbait, I might as well give that a whirl. There we go, Palomar knot, super simple. Half ounce. Double willow blade spinnerbait. Springtime juice. Springtime gold. And I'm also going to put sunscreen on whilst I'm rigging up because because uh, I feel my skin start to burn. And I think my sunscreen's in here. Where are we at, huh? Where are we at? There it is. Love it. Yeah. I don't like this black box. I gotta get a new one. Don't like it, don't like it, don't like it. 
Today, this video is sponsored by Bear Republic Mineral Sunscreen. It's got some zinc, baby. I think this stuff's healthy. Who knows? It's sunscreen, so. The most healthy sunscreen is probably not going in the sun. <laughs> Although everybody needs their vitamin D. And I might as well put some on if I'm gonna be outside. I might already have skin cancer. I've got a spot right here on my, uh, on my face that I really need to go get checked out. I just haven't had a chance with all my travels to uh, on the road to make a dermatologist appointment, but I don't know. Hoping it's not skin cancer. Oh no, oh no, dang it. I dropped my sunscreen and it sunk. What the heck, I see it right there, but I don't have my net. I dropped my sunscreen tub in the dang water. I'm gonna see if there's any way I can snag that. Cause I really, really would like my sunscreen. <laughs> Tyler, you dummy. You're a straight up dumbo for dropping that. Put my spinnerbait on the tip of my rod and see if I can snag my sunscreen. Oh, and now I'm in the grass. Now I'm gonna, really gonna be in a predicament because I'm gonna get grass on my prop and I'm not gonna be able to get my sunscreen. Yeah, this is uncut, y'all. Welcome to the, well, welcome to the debacle. Oh, I got it. Oh, I got it, baby. Oh, I got it. No, 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 no. Don't go any deeper. Don't go any deeper. Oh gosh, dang it. I had it. I had my sunscreen. That open hook on the spinnerbait snagged it for me, but uh, it's hard to maintain. Okay, I got it. I got it. Not too much, not too much movement. Ow, oh, dang it. Dropped it again. Dropped it again. I gotta get like down on my knee here. Ah. Yes! I got it. Gotta get the dang water out. We're good. We're good, baby. Expensive sunscreen. Saved. Thanks to my spinnerbait. Oh, gosh. This has been a wild uncut so far. This has been wild. Now that has shown me a flaw in my kayak, or not my kayak, in my, my setup here. I didn't put this back on because I figured I'd be taking the, the, uh, the system on and off a lot for, uh, for grass purposes. But that was gonna be the easiest way to lose my phone if I had a gaping hole in my kayak. So let's not do that. Instead, let's catch one standing up here on the dang spinnerbait. Cause I can definitely fish this lure a little bit faster and a little bit deeper. And if there's fish to catch deeper, which I feel like that's where the majority of them are on the edge of that grass line out there. And this bait gives me a better shot at uh, discovering where those fish are. But it's so hard because there's long stalks of grass coming off the bottom in deep water. So it's really tough to actually fish cleanly on a deep water cast. I, right now, yeah, I got stinking grass. And I feel like we're getting to a section that I'm gonna catch more fish at. It's kind of more of a shallowy flat and I see more sand. We'll see about it. We'll see about it. Yeah, there's a little, a little buck bass hanging out. Gorgeous. Oh, brother, where art thou? Giant bass, where'd you go? 
Okay, I was wrong about the area getting better. It got better for a second and then it got worse because we got the whole bottom covered in snot grass. Yeah, I don't think the hybrid hunter is gonna be uh, the ticket today. If I'm just guesstimating. And now I'm gonna put the swim bait in the back one and the spinner bait in the front so I can easily switch back and forth between the frog and the spinner bait. Sorry I'm standing up so much. Especially during this time of the year, I really need to see what's down there on the bottom. <clears throat> Understanding bottom composition is key in the springtime. You want hard bottom, you don't want slop, you don't want mud. So I really wanna find areas where the sand is the best. And uh, you can't do that without standing up, looking in the water with your polarized sunglasses. So that's what I'm doing. Once again, I'm fishing the main lake with a frog. Get it out of my hand, Tyler, you doofus. <clears throat> I need to only pull the frog out when I see a really good stretch to throw it on. Stop doing that. Fish what's in front of you. I'm fishing what I want to be in front of me. Start scoping out there, see if, see what kind of depth we find. Ooh, there's one right in front of us here. Here's a bass right here. He's 10 feet out. Where did you go? There he is. It is so hard to actually scope a fish in the kayak. Almost impossible. All I can hope to do is uh, just, just see where they are and throw in their general direction. Yeah, I'm not scoping. I'm not scoping these fish. Do you want to see what the grass looks like though? It looks like it's 10 feet out there. Again, stalks sticking up. Not what I want to see, but that's what we got. <clears throat> Slow roll. The spinner bait. I see some juicy backwaters back there. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm heading, everybody. You ask me where I'm going, it's back there. Really just trying to cover all my, cover all my bases. I fish shallow with different lures. Only got one bite and it was like on a kind of unreplic unreplicable spot. Unless we find more little backwaters like that. I'm not gonna throw the frog a whole lot. I think I've got bass like following my kayak. That's what it looks like on live scope. They're like continually five feet away. Kind of chilling around me. Or that's just where all the fish are, is in that water depth. That could be true. <clears throat> Could be lots of fish hanging out here in six feet of water. Almost nothing more small body of water like than a chartreuse spinnerbait. Am I right? Can I get an amen in the comments? Oh, and I forgot this reel is, this reel is 8.3 to one. So I really got to reel this thing slow. I got to get some hyper mags that are not 8.3 to one. This is all they had in stock. And I think it's caused me to not catch some fish because I'm retrieving it too fast. And I gotta stand up, I gotta see what's up here. We got some sand, we got some grass. And it looks too dang good to not throw a frog. Now this, this is not fishing what I want, this is fishing what I see. I see a good little shallow area here. And I made a bad cast down. 
There we go. Much better. <laughs> Yum. Coming off some kind of sinus infection. Y'all probably heard it in my recent videos. My voice was not a hundo percent. We're getting there, though. Feels better today. <clears throat> With the exception of a few loogies that I might spit. I cannot believe I'm not, I mean, I'm not getting like small bass to bite this thing. That's how I really can tell that these fish are not like where they should be for the day. They will get shallow, but I think the sun is still too low. They really rely on the sun this time of year. <clears throat> and if it's been warm enough and they're locked on beds, you can catch them great on a frog early in the morning when the, when the visibility is low or when they're fry guarding. But when they're just moving up to spawn, the afternoon bite is infinitely better than the morning. So if you're, if you're fishing a tournament, kayak, bass boat, whatever, or just fishing for fun, and it is like that pre-spawn, spawn time, and you get a, you get a late boat number, and you're like, dang, I'm, I'm not going to get to my spot. Honestly, doesn't matter. Majority of the time, your first spot's not going to be good anyways. It's all about that uh, afternoon bite. And if you don't have a fish in the live well by, or a fish on the board by one o'clock, have no fear because oftentimes that's when, uh, that's when the big ones start biting. And I kind of have a feeling that's gonna be the case. And if that is, I'm gonna pause the uncut and we'll do, we'll do a big old cut and start when the sun's higher. But I don't wanna do that. I wanna just catch them now. I had a little one. Come look at my frog, at my ribbit. He was too small to even eat it. Ooh, God, that guy was not too small to eat it though. No, he wasn't. Let's get back in there. Come on now. Come on now. Eat my frog. You kidding me? Gosh, they're not choking it. Besides that one, that big one that I caught. A lot of these fish are not choking it. They're just, they're just hanging out. And he didn't want it. Oh, oh, I see an area. If it's deep enough, it has, if it has a little depth to it, we're gonna catch them right over there. I'm telling you. I'm telling you something. Something about the way the world works. I just want to get flushed by an eight pounder. 10 pounder, 17 pounder. I wonder what the biggest bass ever caught on top water is. Oh, uh-oh, that camera died. I was just saying, I wonder what the biggest bass ever caught on top water is. I bet like a 15 pounder has been caught on top water. Uh-oh. Where are my batteries? I had more batteries in here. Where'd I put them? I for sure brought more GoPro batteries. They're probably at the truck. Dang it. Yeah, they're not here. So uh, we're gonna do a cut real quick and head back to the truck because I gotta have my cameras. There they are. You know what? While I'm here, I'm getting the paddle. I feel like this will come in handy. All right, now enough dillion and enough dallion. It's time for us to catch some dang fish. We are set up now batteries the rest of the day. It took us, you know, 30, 45 minutes to get down there, get the stuff. I scoped around for a little bit out deep, caught a crappie. But now I'm back and we're gonna catch some dang bass. I'm excited. We're getting into a really good area for the frog, I feel. And it's also probably going to be a Texas rig kind of day, maybe a jig as well. Um, as I kayaked back, I went past the other corner. I went one direction when I started. I went back the other direction. I saw lots of holes in the grass that could be beds. 
and they could just hold fish in general. So we're gonna maybe flip a jig in there eventually. There's lots of options, that's the thing. I just don't really feel dialed yet. I mean, I've only caught one fish and a crappie, so I'm not dialed. But I need to be if I'm filming an uncut. Come on now. Gosh, big one, big one. Ate the frog. And it seems like in a kayak, especially when I come back to swing and I miss, my line gets so much more tangled than on a bass boat. So much more. I don't know why. Anybody else out there have that problem? Gosh, that was a nice fish. That was a nice fish. Wonder if she was on a bed. Because it's shallow. And I did not see a wake chasing after it, so. It's kind of what I'm thinking. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, gosh. A big one spooked from like way in the shallows. Like a four pounder, five pounder. And I thought was beelining for my frog. I guess it was just spooking. It wasn't actually. Gosh, holy cow. Holy cow. Whoa, whoa. I've got a giant. I've got another giant. Whoa. Let's power pull down if I can. I just don't want to give this fish any slack. There we go. There we go. Oh my gosh. Yes, sir. Get in here. Oh. What a run. What a stinking run these fish are making. Get in here. You're not hooked well. You're not hooked well. Come on. Come on. Oh my gosh. And you know what? He ran weird because, uh, yeah. Ah! Goodness. Because I don't actually have him hooked in the mouth. Oh, another gorgeous, I mean a little bit healthier fish. Probably only four pounds. I had him hooked outside the mouth. Unbelievable. Wow. Just like totally waked on it. I'm not even sure how that happens, but that is so gorgeous. What a healthy fish. All right, they're, they're in the shallows. I'm talking like when I was fighting that fish, I saw its back out of the water almost the entire fight. So what, six inches, eight inches of water? <laughs> that is crazy. Sorry about the, the backlit right now. I need to get my identifier, add this fish to the board. I don't know if I already said this or not, but I'm not sure if you can actually fish private waters in my tournament. I think it's public water only, but it's my tournament and I can do what I want to. Oh, almost a 20 incher, 19. Thank you, buddy, gorgeous. And I don't know if that was the same fish that had just eaten me. I'm kinda guessing it is, That's how shallow it is out here, but uh, either way. I'm excited. I think what I want to do though, just for the sake of this sun angle, I think I'm going to spin around and go towards the, that, the farthest end of the, of the pond that I can, the lake that I can, and come back this way. Cause I just, I don't like, I don't like shooting straight back that way. But let me tell you something, these fish are crazy. These fish are crazy. How do you hook a fish outside the mouth like that? I don't even understand that. Seems like such a challenging thing to do. It's to foul hook one under the mouth on a frog. That was cool though. There's nothing like the tranquil sounds of nature being interrupted by a skadoosh of a giant bass eating my topwater frog. I mean, it's the... It's the first week of April in the south. They're eating a frog. Sounds about right. So shallow up there. It's inches deep. Inches, I'm talking. I think that was the same fish because if they're that aggressive and there's multiple in the last few casts, I probably would have gotten a bite. I'm gonna cast way up here. See what there is to see. We've got the intro song to this uncut. Well, at least the song that I think I'm gonna use for the intro. Stuck in my head, I might not end up using that song.
All right. Kind of cover some water here while I'm power pulled down. I'm glad I went and got my uh, other batteries though. Wouldn't want to miss that fish catch on the chesty. Okay, that's all she wrote for this corner. Power pole up. Scale backwards. See if I can, is it too shallow? Yeah, it's too shallow to use my uh, drive system. But that's what I brought the paddle for. Ooh, that's, that is not hard bottom, that's mud. Muddy mud. Although I guess if they sweep away the mud, probably gets to, gets to gravel down there. All right. I should have brought the paddle the whole time. What am I doing? I'm a dummy. All right, no fishing. No fishing, just driving to get to where I need to get, which is the other side of the pond. Man, it's just so much sand out here. Oh, some fry, a fry garter. My first fry garter, how about that? How about it? Okay, stop getting distracted, Tyler. We're gonna go into a little backwater back here which may require taking the taking the wheels out, as I say, although actually I have wheels, taking the, taking the pedal drive system out. <clears throat> it looks like it's real shallow. But man, if that's two big frogfish in two shallow little cuts, I mean, we got, we got quite a few more of those kind of cuts coming up here in a second. I wish I could get my live scope out of here Problem is you can't disconnect it from the black box unless you go back there and then like take the cable out of the kayak. So I'm kind of stuck, at least with this kayak, always having my transducer on. Wish I didn't have to do that. Kind of gets in the way when I'm fishing this kind, of, this kind of method, this kind of way. And yeah, I think I should just go ahead, take the wheels off. Is that a bass? Yeah, that's a bass. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and take the wheels up. Hopefully they don't get in the way too much as I'm trying to fish back here. I wish I could just leave them somewhere. Honestly, I may try to find a, a shallow little section of, uh, of water up here and leave them they're kind of in the way. Although I think I see a bass. I think I see a bass. Maybe that was not a bass. Maybe that was a stick. A Stickosaurus Rex. I'm gonna stand up to look. Yeah, that was not a bass. Ew, and it's muddy up here. It is not the most cash money looking place. I'm being honest. It's really shallow, mucky bottom. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not so sure about this, brother. Brother bear. But I do know that it's way too shallow to be using my pedal drive. Hmm. Oh, well, nope. I see one eating bluegill, so. We're gonna give it a shot. I just gotta get my, uh, I gotta get my pedal drive out of here. So, um, let's put the paddle together. Not just use half of it. That right? Nope. There we go. That's right. Oh gosh, a three pounder right here. Whoa, crazy my dude, crazy, crazy. Let's see if this stuff sinks down in the bottom. 
I hope with all these reeds here, I can just leave it here. I feel like I can. Yeah. We're good. Pedal drive is being left <laughs> uh, on a reed patch. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself around this reed patch so I don't, I don't disturb it too much and sink it. And you know what? If I got to get, get in the water to get it back, then by all means, I'll do so. But it just looks way too juicy to not have uh, the burden gone of the pedal drive. And I mean, y'all can see from the drone shot here, it's, it's, it's kind of muddy. But I've caught two fish in two very shallow areas. So I don't want to boohoo it because it's possible there's some chunguses back here. And oh, what fun it would be to catch them on a frog. It's just so shallow. So shallow, yeah, and muddy. The water is not clear back here. Not clear at all. I'm like there's a there's a there's a boil right there. Like, what is that? There's one too. And a big boil up there. There's got to be bass in here. Yeah. Not big, that was a, about a two pounder that ran that way. Nope, you can't whip this reel, I guess. Uh-oh, loogie incoming. <laughs> Yuck. I'll let y'all know when, uh, when they're coming. So you can mute your audio. Yeah, if they're going to be crazy aggressive, I'm just going to work this frog really fast. Honestly, might as well just reel it. It's so shallow. I'm realizing now it's not just muddy. It actually is like dirt shallow. I thought it was muddy water. It's just shallow water. Dang. Well. I don't know then. I'm so conflicted. I'm gonna start paddling around. Start beep bopping. See what's going on around here. Yeah, it's actually pretty clear water. It's just really muddy. I mean, sorry, my brain is not working. It's really shallow. Yeah, this thing. Transducers in the way. Can't really get rid of it. I guess I can put it near my feet, but I'm still going to be stepping on it. There we go. Actually, it is kind of out of the way. More than I thought it was going to be. How big is that fish? I'm seeing boils. But not from... Uh, not from the size fish that I want. I'm not feeling good about this. I thought I was gonna until I got here. My expectations did not meet reality. There's, I mean, I'm seeing bass. You saw that whole fish spook there, but it's not the size you'd want. Tiny. There's dang nothing back here. I'm done with this area. There's nothing back here for me. I'm convinced it's way too shallow. Yep, water immediately gets clearer when I get back to the main body here. And am I, is my pedal drive still there? It is, amazing. All right, now it's time to fish. I think what's well, some better stuff out here.
little guy. Man, setting the hook on a frog is so hard in a kayak. I am not good at it. There's too much going on. But right there, I mean, even though I missed that bite, that was a fish and it clued me in that they're not out there. I didn't get a bite back there. But the second I got closer to the opening, I got a bite. So I don't think fish are back there. They're gonna be here and here and further. Come on now. Big Bertha. Where are you at, Big Bertha Bass? See a swirl. Something keeps swirling right there. Probably the fish that I missed. Yeah. If he's making that small of a swirl, we don't want him. that I keep standing up y'all but I just need to need to see what I'm casting at what the bottom composition is like because yes oh, dang it dang it dang it dang it dang it I doubt that I'm catching that fish I think I got pinned him a little bit we'll see though Another big one. In the, in the first two bites I was just saying came where there was some kind of, I mean, yeah, it was shallow water, but it was kind of sandy. Nothing on the mud. And that bite was kind of on the mud. So deeper mud, but mud nonetheless. Makes me feel like a lot of these females are either pre-spawn or a lot of pro-spawn. Gosh, another one, another one. Why are they missing the frog so much? Gosh, these fish need aim assist or something. That fish shot out of the cattails. I saw the weight come get it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Well, we found what they're doing. They're on the shallow stuff. Probably eating bluegills. I'm just not having the, uh, the best hookup ratio right now. Ugh. Ooh, yuck. Sludge. Sludgy, sludgy. That was a bed at some point. I should get one here. I had to guess. Yep. Got him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I told you. I told you I would. Perfect spot too. You gonna fight? There he goes. There he goes. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Not a giant. You know, two pounder. But right where he should be in a little opening next to a uh, little drop off. Heck yeah. Frog. Top of the mouth. I'm, I'm not even gonna put him on the. Uh, Put him on the board. I don't want y'all to know I catch small ones. Thank you, friend. I appreciate you, though. You are lots of fun. You are lots of fun. Oh, hey, I forgot to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Bass Forecast. So let me get all the sludge off, and then we'll talk. 
So Vast Forecast is a brand that I've worked with for a long time and I'm now a co-owner, a small co-owner, but still a co-owner nonetheless in the app. And they're an awesome fishing platform that really helps you not just know where to go on your body of water and what to throw, but also what days to go out on the water. You know, if you only get a certain amount of time to fish, sometimes you want to know, am I going to go on a good day weather-wise and when the fish should be biting? And Bass Forecast with their Bass Forecast rating up to 10 days in advance can help you with that. As I open up the app here, I'm going to click on the Bass Mood Rating. It says Bass Pattern is Spawn. That makes sense. New moon in three days with a stable barometer and favorable water temperature trends. That's all good stuff that leads to today's rating of a 6.6. .6. And with the new moon coming, we have some good days coming. A 7.2, a 6.5, and then a 7.5 on Monday. That's probably the new moon day. We're gonna see a whole lot of bass on beds, at least where I'm from, around that time. I can scan to the right and see the spot on uh, solar times, the moon phases. Uh, it looked like the major feeding time is at 9.54 to 11.54. So we're kind of in it right now. Honestly, makes sense why I just got so many bites in a row. We're in the major feeding time. And if I'm on the spawn and I go to cover weeds, it looks like topwater frog, swim bait. I got a few bites on it, didn't get any fish that, that committed. And then craw tube, soft stick bait, jerk bait. Those are ones that I'm gonna have tied on when I get to actually doing some bed fishing. But the deal is about the spawn time of year is that fish can be in either pre or post. So you can actually switch to pre-spawn or post-spawn on the platform. And it'll give you recommendations on baits and locations. But if I'm gonna choose a day to go fishing, man, I'm gonna choose Monday as my next day to go. And so that's what Bass Forecast helps me do. They have a, uh, a premium version and a free version. and with pre premium, you get a Tackle Warehouse gift card. So the premium is $20 a year. You get a $20 Tackle Warehouse gift card. It is basically free for the entire year. And there's no minimum purchase now on Tackle Warehouse with that gift card. So you get Bass Forecast Premium for a year and you get some lures. So how about that? So huge thanks to Bass Forecast for being G's as always. I just love getting to partner with companies that actually help me as an angler. And so if you want to check them out, I'll have the app linked down in the video description and pinned to the top of the comments. But you know what, if we're in the major feeding time right now, I need to get back out there. So check if my wheels are still there. Yep, I still see them. Unless we get a crazy wind, I don't think those wheels are, are going nowhere. And I see there's a white spot here that I think is an empty bed. It's not, not being occupied anymore. I'm excited. If they're biting a frog, we got this whole bank here and this whole bank here that I think uh, we're gonna have some success on. Come on, catch me one right here. Right here, just flush, get flushed. Get flushed. Do, 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 do. See, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <coughs> kind of throw out the, <coughs> oh, there's my cough coming back. Throughout the rest of this video, I'm gonna work my way back up, kind of one bank and then back down up the other bank. Kind of that pattern all throughout the rest of the pond fishing all the shallow stuff and then bed fish up north i'm sure i'll find a few on beds and i can kind of pull out a a wacky japanese lure that i have um, to catch a few of these bed fish and that should make a good uncut should make a pretty decent uncut and i will catch one in this pocket up here unless i already did did i already catch one up there Oh, shoot. That might be the pocket that I already caught one. Yeah. Well, it makes sense why I caught one now. I've gotten all these bites. I can see what makes this area so good. Skaploosh get flushed. And I'm going to put the frog down just for a second while I nab the swim bait. Because the, the, the middle section out here is actually kind of shallow. So as I drift back down towards where my wheels are, I'm gonna fish a swim bait out in the middle, just for a few casts, see what happens. And I guess I'll fish, you know, halfway up and then come back and get my wheels. I don't wanna leave them all the way down here. Oh, eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh, I had a fish follow almost the whole time, dang. Got a two pounder, but he didn't eat, which will happen. That will happen. I just want to get absolutely gobbled on this thing. I've been addicted to the swim bait bite recently. 
which I know is a little late in the season. I should have gotten on it more in the pre-spawn, but if I'm being honest, I didn't really fish much in the pre-spawn. We had a baby in January, and so <clears throat> I didn't do a whole lot of fishing in January at all, maybe like a day or two. And then uh, February, I started traveling on the Bass Pro Tour and still doing baby stuff when I got home, so didn't fish a whole lot in February. And March is full-blown pre-spawn. And I think I was gone more days out of Dallas in March than I was home. So, that's how it goes. My phone's blowing up. I'm fishing, everybody. Stop texting me. Although I fish on weekdays. So, kind of makes sense why I'm getting phone, call, phone calls and texts. It's a work day for most folks. And it is for me too, but my work days just look different. Come on. Tell me something good. Get me frog. Get me frogfish. Catch me a big fish on a frog. Now the good thing is, these fish seem to be coming from a decent ways to eat this thing. So it's not like I have to land right on their face. They're not in a very like small, specific little pockets I gotta land in. I can pretty much cast this wherever. And if they're in that general region, they're gonna come munch it. Gosh, the bugs are out now though. The bugs have arrived. Come on, how have I not caught one in this corner? Like everything seems right. It's not too, it's not too like shallow and mucky. I've kind of learned that I don't necessarily need sand to catch them. So, why am I not catching them? How about here? How about there? Yeah, not cast. I'm gonna inhale a bug. <clears throat> I feel it, I feel it coming. You're gonna hear more than just hawking a loogie. I'm gonna hawk <coughs> a stinking <coughs> bug out of my lung. Those bugs don't leave me alone. Hmm, bad cast. No, not a bad cast. It must have scared a fish into coming to check it out. That was the cast I wanted to make originally. But I landed way short. Dang it, bad cast got the fish. And it seems like you have one chance. Especially these smaller fish. If you swing and miss, they ain't coming back. Oh my gosh, they're so small. These have got to be small fish. It makes me think if I just throw a wacky worm up shallow, I may have better luck. So I think I'd actually, I'd actually hook these fish. They're not eating the frog. They're just, I mean, they're, yeah, they're exploding on it, but they're not getting in their mouth. And that happens sometimes. It do be what happens. And we're also kind of getting to the area where there could be some bed fish up here. And also, or my, or my wheels, my wheels, my pedals could work. We're in deep enough water, but I'll just stick with the paddle for now. As I look for beds. It 
sometimes that's what bad fish will do. They'll come up and, and, and explode on a frog, but their, their goal is not to eat it. Their goal is just to scare it away. Dang, dang, dang. I see a lay down. The only lay down in this whole lake. Oh gosh, tried to skip under there. It didn't work. Nothing there. Nothing doing. Nothing doing or not doing. All right, keep on going. Can't get disheartened. This lake is, I mean, it's a beautiful lake. I just don't like how it sets up right now. Maybe in the summertime when they're on the deep grass edges, you can throw a big worm. I just don't like how it sets up right now for spawn time. Dang it. Oh, camera died again. Am I gonna go through all four batteries? Yeah, I probably should have hardwired this one too. Dang it. Okay, we're back. Back on both cameras, back on the grind. And there's just gotta be bets. I'm so shocked. In this area, there's just not none, which means, uh, the bottom composition's not right. I think on that side, especially up there, it is, there's sand. I'm not seeing nothing here. Which is a dead giveaway. That they ain't spawned over here. You know, I need to listen to my, uh, to my own words and stop fishing this stuff i just don't want to i want to catch them on this i feel like i should be able to but the conditions are telling me otherwise now i see a little bit of stuff over here that i want a frog and then i'm done i'm done with the frog Paddle all right up here, and then we're done with the frog. This area, gotta have one. Got to. Too much going on. Deeper water. Oh, here we go. Here's a wake. Got him. You got him. I knew it. I knew it. See? You just got to find the right area. And you can call your shots. Gosh, get in here. Get in here. Yes, sir. Another two-pounder. I knew I could call my shot. I knew I could. Yes. And that's why you got to be paying attention to where the bites are coming. Nothing on this bank in terms of, like, much grass. And then it gets deeper here. And I see a lay down and a little grass edge. Just it has more, has more on the top of the water. And there was a fish there. And there was a fish there and they were roommates. All right. Kind of makes me think I can just go down this bank 
calling my shot. Now this, I did not need my wheels for. Is there a bed there? That's the question. No, there's not. That fish was just on the lay down. And now that I get here, I can tell it's, it's even different than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was just a grass edge, but it's actually a full blown lay down, which makes sense why a fish was here. Nothing else like it on this bank. All right, cool. Cool beans, man. Cool beans, man. Some big old bluegill in here too. Mm. See, there's a bed right here, but I cannot tell if there's a fish on it or not. That was a bed right here though. Oh, and there's also a bed right there. Are these bluegill beds or are these, these bass beds? Don't know. But I probably need to be flipping a jig around if I'm being honest. we're finally in some better bottom composition areas. Some better areas. Make a cast up here. Did my frog sink? I think it's full of water. Yes. There we go. I get the feeling on a on a, a lake like this that the uh, <laughs> the morning and the evening bites are like the way to go, and these fish just turn on then. In the middle of the day, it's tough. That's what I've noticed about a lot of these bodies of water. All right, let's keep paddling up. I gotta go back and get my wheels though at some point. I'm gonna keep saying wheels. Kind of funny to me. Hopefully y'all are enjoying this video. I'll have a whole bunch more kayak uncuts coming for y'all this year. Again, I partnered with Native on a big video series, big list of videos. My, I found that bluegill. I have found the bluegill. They're everywhere. The big ones are over here, man. Dang. Big old pumpkin seeds. Makes me think I can catch one on the frog. Dang. Dang nabbit. Yeah, I think it's about time that I retire for sure that swim bait. I don't I don't think that swim bait's getting bit. So retire this. I don't know if I want to retire the swim the spinner bait yet, but I'm gonna put a jig on this swim bait rod. It's a little long for a jig, but it'll it'll do, donkey. Power pull down, actually, yeah. Put the poles down. Reach back here in my tackle bag. Find myself a jig. I'm also gonna go ahead and get out the crazy Japanese lure. It's this thing, the Q-Bomb. It's my buddy Alton Jr.'s signature bait. Signature Japanese lure. Do I have a jig? Yeah, I've got a jig. I've got a jig. Yes, I do. Little half ounce Outcast Tackle Juice Jig. How about it? Now, <laughs> I do need a trailer. So, I'm gonna 
reach back in here. Snag me a trailer. Uh oh. I gotta leave that out. So once I, uh, once I untie, or not untie, once I flip off this. Yeah. Where'd my scissors go? Ain't no way I lost them in the hole, too. Here they are. Snip off the old swim bait. I'll come back to you later in the season, buddy. I want to catch some fish on you. I don't think Cole Shad season's done yet. Gosh, I don't like this black box at all. Too cumbersome. And then we got to unzip our Evolution little tackle bag here and get ourselves the right craw. Green pumpkin gold looks good. And I think if they're eating bluegills, I feel like they are. And that's what these fish want is a jig. I'm going to give it to them. That's what they want. I'm not going to argue with them. Spit. And I've made a plethora of jig videos, but y'all keep eating them up. So I'm going to keep making more, baby. The jig's my favorite lure for all year round. Because it catches them. Everywhere I go. But especially my favorite place, which is Minnesota. Catches the snot out of them there. Like sheesh. Hmm. If I can keep this rod out. There we go. I gotta decide what I'm doing. I'm power pulled down. They're not biting the frog anymore. So I'm gonna switch this rod and this rod. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna power pull up. I'm gonna go get my uh, get my wheels back, and we'll see y'all in a second. So we have put the kayak back together, got the wheels on. And I'm going to start going shallow and looking for bed fish, specifically in the shallow pockets that I kind of threw the frog around, but did not, uh, did not see any earlier. But now the sun is higher. My sun angle will be, actually, I'd rather, I'd rather go with the wind again, if I'm being honest, but it'll be fine. Should be able to see some fish. And hopefully we'll find a few bed fish that are, uh, that are getting committed as the bite window closes on just regular, you know, fishing. I want to see if I can catch a few that are up on the beds. So that's the hope. And I'm just going to pitch the jig around in those areas once I get there. In the open holes and such. Well, hold up, hold up. Let me power pull down here. I think he might be catchable. Let me spin around here and look at him. Where'd you go? Let's go ahead and flip the jig back on the bed. See if dear old fishy comes back. I mean, this is the most obvious looking bed physically possible. So not surprised I found one, but will he eat? And right now, will he return, is the question. I'll try to give you all some bed fishing tips as I do this. But I don't even see, oh gosh, whoa. Okay, the sun angle totally matters because I looked this way and I saw a small one, but I totally passed over what I think is a bed here with two fish on it, like a three and a half pounder and a two pounder. So maybe I should go with the sun angle. Yeah, and this small guy is not even, not even back. Although it's totally possible that that was just a, a male courting a female. Like there she is right there. Oh, it's a fry garter. It's a dang fry garter, that's what it is. I'm gonna try the old Japanese lure. 
that I've uh, I've been wanting to try. Let's go ahead and grab the dang, the dang wacky worm. We're gonna take off the mock stick. Thanks for playing, buddy. Down in the kayak somewhere. And we're gonna grab this crazy contraption. You know, in the Japanese lure market, they have to get more and more off the wall with their lure designs to catch fish because it's such a such a pressured area of the of the country to fish and dang that is wild looking it does not fall very fast though that's the problem i see this i see this fry garter but oh my gosh that is so crazy though it has like it looks like when you put your hands on a science experiment thing and uh static electricity fry garters are just so hard to catch that's the that's the problem with them. And now the sun angles horrible and I can't see that bed fish. All right. False alarm. That wasn't going to work. And I think now the fry is under my kayak, so I'm not catching this bass. No, I am not. All right, we're trying everybody. What I really think we're dealing with is, in my opinion, besides like late summer, early fall, the toughest time of the year to catch a bass is when a lot of them have spawned and they're just not really feeling like eating. They're either protecting fry or they're resting from the spawn process. It's rare to just smash them in the post-spawn unless there's a shad spawn going on, which out here, there's no shad, so. This water was 70 when I last looked at the transducer, so these fish are definitely coming up to the end of it. I hate that it's not just like constant fish catching, although y'all know, if you bass fish, that's not how it normally is. I just like to do these kayak on cuts where I'm gonna catch more fish, talk about more techniques as I do them. But this is the time of the year where, man, you could go through slumps or you don't get in an area that has fish for a long time and you finally do and it's like oh all right bed fish where you at where did you go i want to find you i'm gonna i'm gonna go up to the point up here because i can't be looking at beds from uh, the wrong direction need to have the sun at your back to do what I'm trying to do. All right. Finally got to a better area where I can see in the sun. I mean, the wind is calm and the sun is high. I just need to go this way. So the sun's behind my eyes. There's just gotta be more bed fish than what I saw this morning. He's like a two-pounder, cruising in and out. He's cruising right here. I wonder if he'll eat the jig if I flip it at him. This thing did not seem to uh, interest him in the slightest. Maybe the jig will. Nope, nope. He is frantically swimming around, looking for his home. Which makes me think I'm on his bed, but I didn't I didn't see him before I got here, so I don't think so. Gosh, homie homie is just like cruising around here. I wanna see where he goes. I wanna see if he's actually on a on a bed. Why he's so committed to this area. If I could find him. Oh, he's gone now, so. Don't oh, there he is, there he is. There he is. Where are you going, dude? It's going back that way. And now the wind has picked up, of course. It ain't never easy, is it, folks? It ain't never easy. He's still just cruising around. Like, I love observing fish, but not if they're just gonna, like, swim around. And I now see that it's two of them. I see a female here 
and that's the male up here. Male is considerably smaller. Male is maybe a pound and a half. Female's three. I think I've got to get myself above the bed because I, I can't see him now. So I'm going to have to pull up and then, oops, and then paddle into the slot up here. You have to be so specific with your sun angles. Yeah, that's his bed right there. That's his bed. He is just not that committed to it. That's the problem. Oh, I'm going to catch him though. Oh, I'm going to catch him though. I'm going to catch his butt. He came back. He came back and he's looking. Oh, I'm going to catch his butt. And I think his sweet spot, which is where he's the laid eggs are going to lay eggs, or she will. I think I just found where it is. Let's try the uh, Japanese deal. Come on. Come eat it. Just slurp it up. Just slurp it up. Super simple. That's all you got to do. Man, it, it looked at this thing and backed away. So as soon as a fish backs away from something, you pretty much know not to uh, put that one back in there. This guy's, he's looking more interested. Oh, I got him, I got him. No way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I thought he was somewhere else in the bed. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Get in here, buddy. Man, they are so strong. You're not even that big. You're not even that big. Come on now. Come on now. Ah, I'm gonna flip you in. Flipping you in here. Heck yeah. Got him on the jig. Corner of the mouth. Outcast tackle. Juice jig. Thanks, buddy. Oftentimes, because this thing imitates a bluegill, people think a jig imitates a craw. Rarely. If you have crawfish in your lake and you're throwing the right color, I guess they can, but for the most part, it imitates a bluegill. And when they're on beds, it's what you want to be doing. Let's go. Sorry for the long drought there in content. It's just kind of how bed fishing is. And I could have gone back on that public lake today and filmed an uncut bed fishing um, and caught giants probably, but I just didn't feel like doing that. Didn't think that was the uh, content move, but here I am doing it now so merry christmas all right so that fish needed a just a number of casts for it to finally get aggressive enough to eat let's keep on looking i just saw a fish spook from over here about a three pounder but i don't think i don't even see a bed at all that's the problem I don't see a bed for that fish. Let's grab my jig here. I see a lay down in the water out here. Kind of deeper. I'm going to flip my jig out there. I'm just slipping in all the white spots. A lot of them are not beds. Matter of fact, the majority of them are not beds, but. That's another tip for you guys in the springtime. If you're bed fishing or you want to catch fish during this bed season, oftentimes you don't even have to get on top of a bed to catch it. If you just see a white spot, flip a Texas rig Ocho or a jig just to the edge, the far edge of that white spot and drag across it. And I think that's a better way to catch bed fish, if I'm being honest, is, uh, is fishing the white spot, not, not getting right on top of them, power pulling down and having to see them bite. You can catch them way faster if you just uh, fish the white spots. It's kind of what I'm trying to do here. Just fish the openings. Where is another bed? See, I love this time of year because I'm, I'm good at sight fishing. Like it's one of my strengths. But it's just not the most fun to put on camera. Takes a long time. Got to make a bunch of different, you know, bait switches to catch this to catch one fish. 
There's got to be more. I mean, this is a gorgeous stuff right here. It's the best stuff I've seen all day for beds. Oh, there's one. There's one. I see you, my friend. I'm going to back on up and pull down. I see you. You cannot escape me. Heck yeah. Well, I'm a little close. We'll see if she gets used to me, though. What happened there is I saw a fish. She was looking at me, actually, and then spooked. So I power pulled down. I'm just going to wait a second. I'm just going to wait for that fish to get back in the bed, see if she's fine with me sitting here. Because eventually, you become an object if you don't move all that much. Just become an object to them, and they don't get scared. They'll, they'll become confident in being in the bed again. I don't see her. I'm going to flip in there and let my jig sit whilst I watch. While I watch. Because I would like her to come back in the bed and my jig's already there. Not the other way around. Not see her come back and then flip because she might spook again. There we go. She came back and took a quick look at the bed and then and then ditched ding dong ditched her own home just got to be patient no reason to keep flipping in there messing up the area if the fish is not back yet so there she is man i think i might be too close to the bed because she just did another circle and came back to the edge of the bed but did not go in it so We'll see. I'll see about it. It's gotta be patient. It's really hard to be patient when I could just be fishing. But judging how the rest of the fish are behaving, this is probably the most high percentage way right now to get a bite. Where is she? She's like gone. She is G-O-N-E. That's crazy. Don't know where she went. She was also higher in the water column as she swims through the bed, which makes me think she's not actually... Oh, there she is. Gosh, got her. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Had to be patient. Had to be patient. I told you guys. My jig was already in there. I think I made maybe two flips total. And left the jig in there while the fish came back, felt the tick, and I got her. Yes! Let's go. Let's stink and go. I mean, like, roof of the mouth. That fish was not getting off. Ugh. Come on now. Yes, sir. Persistence and patience pay off. Thank you, girl. See, if I kept on flipping in there, she would have seen the uh, the jig hit the water and go to the bottom. Hit the water, go to the bottom. But I let my jig sit in the bed. It became an object to her. She got used to it. And then when she eventually came back and got comfortable in the bed, hopped it a few times, and it's like, whoa, what the heck is that? The object moved. And I caught it. Yes. Bed fishing 101. The oldest trick in the dang book, everybody is that right there. It's the oldest dead fishing trick in the book. Let your lure sit in there and let them come back. All right. As always, all my tackle will be linked down in the video description. So the, the jig that I'm using, the crawl that I'm using, rod, reel, line. Now this is not my jig combo. I'll actually leave my favorite budget and nicer jig combos down there in the, uh, in the video description. But enough talk. Let's catch another one. Problem is we're getting to the point here and it's kind of windy on the point. Cannot see that well. Oh gosh, there's a bed. There's a bed right here. Holy cow. I knew there was a white spot here, but I did not know if there was a fish there. Turns out there is. 
And that fish, I mean, if I can get that close to it before it spooks, I can probably fish it pretty close. So I'm gonna pull a little loop-de-loop -loop here and power pull down farther away than when I spooked that fish. I have found one and he's committed. Come on now, eat it, eat it. He was committed. He was straight up looking at it and now he's, now he left the bed. What the heck? These fish are all in the same mood and that is, they don't want to eat Tyler's jig. Eat it, eat it, come on. You know, I'm not much into gimmicky type stuff and to me, bait pop and thump gel, they got gimmicky written all over them in my mind, but let's give it a shot. Let's see if this fish that I can't get to eat anything will eat something that's got some gel on it, some sparkle, some juices. All right. Got him, there we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Beautiful fish. Chased it down on the bed. And you know what? <sighs> Maybe it was the stuff that I put on there. Who knows? <laughs> Goodness. Fish was even bigger than I thought it was gonna be. That's awesome. And he's got the outcast tackle jig in the face. That was cool. So you know what? I'm gonna choose to believe that that stuff actually worked. But I'm gonna, as Ronald Reagan said, test but verify, no, trust but verify. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, you know what? On that bed fish, it did change its behavior when I put on that stuff. But could I have just finally flipped the jig in the right spot? Potentially. Correlation is not always causation, but I am happy we caught one because I was getting frustrated. Because that's pretty much the only bed fish left. And as you can tell, we are not uh, uncut anymore. <laughs> A 961. Oh, no. 27, inch. 27 inches long and 18 inch girth. Oh, she's a skinny girl. Right. Ah, 27 inches and only 9 pounds? Yeah. That's a bummer. Uh. Well, you're right. The one that was right here, that was not there two hours ago. When I came through, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wait and see if she comes back. Yeah, that just and they just started down there. When I left you this morning, uh -huh. I caught one little fish. That's Got it. it. So we left and went and fed uh, hog traps and hog baits mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And when we came back across that dam. There was probably 50 fish that had moved up. Gotcha. Well, as you can tell, the uh, the wind is blowing now. So say bye to any bed fishing I wanted to do. Like I said, there's like a six pounder right here. And in the time that I was talking to him about his, his 9.6, whatever it was, that uh, that fish has come and gone with the male like three times, but they won't stay in the bed. So I think we're just dealing with a really tough time right now. Like he caught a bunch here yesterday. I've seen a handful of decent ones, caught a five. That fish is definitely over six. It's just, I can't, they're just not in the right mood right now, which is a bummer, but that's how it goes. I guess I, in my mind, I had one or two ways that I wanted to catch them. And if I can't catch them those ways, I wasn't, I wasn't I happy. Nice Tyler, to nice to meet you. And they, I think they're in between waves of the spawn. Gosh. Gosh. Flip in there, even from the bank. And this male is still skittish on this bed right here. Oh, there we go. Yeah. 
Got him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What a nice mail. Goodness, what a nice mail. Holy cow. Oh, stop it. No. Sorry about that, buddy. If that's the mail, beautiful three pounder. My goodness. How big is the female? Dude, she's like six, seven pounds. Well, too bad she's not sticking around. But sometimes all it takes is a different angle out of bed fish. And in this instance, it was going from the bank. And that fish bit real quick. And you know what? As much as I want to be disappointed that I didn't catch any of the giant fish that are in here, I still had a heck of a day. Before I got the kayak out of the water, I got the chance to meet the owner of this property and a lake down there and also another big lake that way that hasn't yet opened to private water fishing members yet. But he is doing a whole lot of work to make these lakes the best fishing lakes they can be. And he was like, you only caught one five pounder? And I said, well, you know what? I'm trying to craft a story. And if I was just going out there on the, the edge of the grass drop off, throwing a wacky worm or a big curly tail worm, I probably would have caught more fish and maybe some of the eight, nine, 10 pounders that live in here. It's evidenced by the guy who caught a 10 pounder on that lake today or a 9.6. But as a YouTuber, I wanna tell a cool story. If I threw the same worms all the time, which of course work, it wouldn't tell a fun story. And so I was hoping today the fish would be spawning. I could catch them on a frog and then a swim bait and then bed fish in the afternoon. But you know what? The conditions just didn't line up for that. And that's okay. Because seriously, if I'm gonna complain about a day like today, there's something wrong with me. Well, I know that wasn't a total uncut, but I hope that you guys enjoyed that video. I've got some awesome lakes on my Google Doc that we're gonna take this kayak to and the other one here in the next few months. So subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Huge thanks to Bass Forecast and Private Water Fishing for sponsoring this channel. If you wanna see my last, actually not my last one, one of my better kayak uncuts, a lot more fish catching. I think I caught 50 fish in this video. It'll be up here in this corner. I've got bugs on my face. We'll see you next time right here on Uncut.